times. So, Sean, we were talking off camera about uh, thin provisioning, you know. Now, yeah. so you were not an HP, uh, a three-part classic, right? You weren't part of the no. part of the acquisition team, but so now, thin provisioning is now part of the portfolio, and and you see a lot of companies have announced thin provisioning. What's as as a quasi outsider to the th three-par? What does what does thin provisioning meant to the insider at HP and Talk a little bit about you know thin provisioning and why you, your contention was it's different than yeah, all it, the other uh, stuff out there. So talk sure, a little bit about that. It's really core to the three part value proposition because it's built into the architecture. And as Craig was saying, we're now in our fourth generation ASIC, which includes you know the three part buzzword thin built in, and that's the difference is that it is built in, it is native to the architecture, versus where it's bolted on and you know sometimes called a feature. Well, my guess is it's not always that well used. You know, three par, almost every customer uses it because that's kind of why they bought it. And we guarantee that, hey, give us a chance. We'll guarantee you're going to save at least 50% in your storage. Or we'll actually buy the rest. That's a little bit conservative to us. We usually do better. But where it's a bolt on to check the box on an RFI, it's probably not being used. And I'd question whether all the other arrays and their customers are getting anywhere close to the benefits that three par does. Yeah, we've quantified some of that on <clears throat> on Wikibon. I mean, if you if you you know search three par on Wikibon, we, we actually did a customer survey mm -hmm. uh, where we we actually pulled data, not it was only metadata, it was no customer data out of the right. arrays and did David Floyer did a detailed analysis and um, it was pretty impressive. Yeah. No no doubt about yeah. it. You guys pioneered that whole space. Mm -hmm.